These are the stats that go with it. 86 points from 93 so far this season. 23 consecutive home wins. Rio are like this one. 36 clean sheets from the last 70 games. Look, it's a really big night for Liverpool's fans, but it's a big night for a football club that will now be thinking, with the young squad and the way we play football, this should be happening again and again, Peter. Yeah, I mean, it is a young squad. Uh, it's only going to improve, I think, if they keep the, the front three together mainly. Uh, but they've got keeper, back four. I mean, there's so, so many good players and none of them are getting on. They're all... You know, young players who are going to improve, and I, I, I genuinely believe there's a there's a period of dominance, and not just in English football, but in European football, there's a potential for that as well. Such a strange time for these fans. Look, this is our live fan wall. Well done, everybody! Congratulations! You are the champions of England. You've won the Premier League. It's a weird time to be so distanced from other people, isn't it? And there will be people that have been through a very difficult few months as well. Yeah, it's a strange time to be winning the league. You know, we've not seen this before. But going back to what Crouchy says, you know. This looks, like a, this looks like an era of dominance we're seeing. You look at the youth on the team, mm. the manager as well. The only thing is if the manager and, and the club can keep all of these great players together, you, you won't be able to, to think that Man City are 20-odd points behind. Chelsea are building, but there's a long way to go. You know, but the fan base that they've got, the money, unbelievable. It's, 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 they could go and do anything they want. OK, well, I'll tell you what, let's hear from a man who has been central to the story at Anfield this season. Huge congratulations. He's wearing his Liverpool top. Jurgen Klopp, you've done it. You've won the Premier League. Oh, he can't hear. And after that great build-up, he can't hear us. Jurgen, listen, we'll try and sort out the sound in just a couple of moments. Please stay there. We'll come back to you uh, in just a second. Um, the fans obviously can hear us. They've already got smiles on their faces. A little mention, really, for Jurgen, I think, before we speak to him, just the difference and the impact that he's made. Yeah, I, he said when he walked in in his pr first press conference along the lines of it's not, it's the important, it's not important uh, when, about how people talk about you when you come here. It's important how they talk about you when they leave. And I think he's now put down... Champions League, Premier League now after 30 years. This guy, no matter when he walks out now, he's a hero, he's a god in the eyes of these Liverpool fans. And, and what he's created, other than a great squad and a team that are relentless, is a, a culture at that football club now that seems sustainable, something that's going to be durable and it's long term. And that's what Liverpool have been searching for for all these years after a, a long period of dominance with the likes of Kenny Dalglish and his era. So this is great times I'm, um, I'm seeing definitely coming for this club. I think that the hardest thing in football seems to be recruitment in this day and age, and their recruitment has been spot on. Mm. And not just that, the improvement of the players that have gone there. I think they've bought the right players, the right types of characters, mm. and they've improved in every, you know, every few months that you've seen them. And um, you know, players going to levels that you never expected. I mean, we saw, we saw Salah at Chelsea, you know, not, the, not the same player. I think Mane's gone to a, to a new level now, and so many of them have improved. And I think that's down to Jurgen Klopp, but I think the team behind the recruitment deserve a hell of a lot of praise as well. I think you now, you're now on the head when you talk about culture, because when he come to the club, the, you know, Liverpool obviously hadn't won anything for a long time, and he come in and he looks like he leads from the front. Mm. You know, everything that all great managers, I believe, the team play in their with their identity of their manager. And he went straight away. He started talking about the rock and roll football, the high press, and was like, "Well, what's this?" You know, because we at the era we were used to like thinking about Barcelona and tiki taka and can you play? And they just went back to basics, and he built from the back. He got the right players in at the right time, like Crouchy said. Recruiting was unbelievable. And, you know, he's a phenomenal manager, you know. And, like, if he decides to stack, stick around at Liverpool for the next five years, then they're going to be massively mm. difficult to get off that perch. I think also, as well, is, is they've done it a lot different to a lot of other teams. When other teams have been trying to get success, they bought superstars. Yeah. To, to, to fix things, mm. they've tried to buy big names who are that current superstars at that time. He hasn't done... I don't know a superstar that he's actually bought. He's bought players that he can build, like Crouchy said. Mm. You see, Van Dijk, it wasn't a finished article. Yeah. As you can see, he's a great player. He's come and gone on to a new level. Alisson, he wasn't really someone we were yeah. saying was the best goalkeeper in the world at the time. Big money, but they've gone on and created great things. The front three, what we all saw potential was good players who... who can they go on to different levels and now the best three uh, arguably in, in, in the world? So 
that goes down to great coaching, great culture, a great structure to work from. The foundations at the club there uh, are, are impeccable at the moment. And again, these fans you can see here on this wall are all celebrating now, but I don't think this is going to be the last time they celebrate like this. I, I think we've got to remember as well, one, Man City are one of the greatest teams we've, we've ever seen in, in the Premier League. Like really, obviously, as we saw tonight, defensively, there's a lot of work to be done. But going forward, I don't think we've seen much better, you know? So for Liverpool to be 20-odd points ahead of them yeah. and to win the league at this early stage, that just shows the magnitude of what they've achieved this season. And I think when you, when you talk about points on the board or you talk about improving individuals, those are kind of tangible things that we can understand, right? What isn't tangible is how you create a culture, how you create a relentlessness and a belief among your players. And to just miss out on the Champions League and win it the next season tells you something. To just win out on the yeah. Premier League and win it the next season tells you something else. Yeah, I was just going to say that. I think the character that this, this squad have is shown in, in the downtimes. When you aren't successful and you lose and the way that they lost the, the Champions League final some big mistakes etc but winning the, the, what, losing the league last time as well any other season they win that league mm. so the disappointment there and then it's down to the coaching staff and the big leaders in that change room to come to the fore and galvanise people and give people that belief and again it goes back to we have a process here trust it believe in me as a manager follow and, and that's what they do. And all the great managers you see, the players stand behind that man, heads down, just follow him. Happened with my year at United, you see it with all of them, the Mourinho. These guys have that kind of something about them, that, um, that, that aura, that they get people to come behind them and just follow because they tr believe, they trust in that process what the managers have put down. You're doing a great job standing there praising Liverpool, by the way. How is this for you? It's, listen, you've got to respect when, when a team do what they've done, 28 wins out of uh, 31 games, you can't not sit here and, 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 and praise that. And as much as I'm Manchester United, Liverpool have to get that respect given what they've done. Love that. I, I want to talk to the two of you. There's mm. two men have pulled on that red jersey and run out there as Liverpool players at Anfield. How much of a difference will it make to the club and pati particularly to these fans that that kind of constant conversation about they've not won the title since <clears throat> 1990 is now gone? It's now, it almost feels like a fresh start, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's a fantastic club to play for. It did, personally, it didn't go very well for me there, but, you know, the, the fans were a different class. You know, the, the best ex atmosphere yeah. I've experienced in a game was actually going there what is that? as a Chelsea player to oh. play. You know, it's an unbelievable place. Oh, the city no, lives no. and breathes football. What? And it was, it was a, you know, it was a big fit anchor they had at the club, 30 years without a title. Now it's been lifted. And we can sit here and you look at things. And one thing I think is very important with the club, you don't hear any of the players, the top players, being linked with any other clubs. There's no sniffs with them, Salah, you know, it doesn't look... They want to play and they want to stay with Jurgen Klopp because they know this could be a special era. And, and that's credit to the manager, but also credit to the staff around him and the culture that he's brought in. But I look at those top players, like the, the, the Salas, the Marleys, the front three especially, the goalkeeper, where, where would they go? Mm. At this precise moment, who's better than Liverpool in Europe? Mm. Um, I look at all the big clubs, they're, they're all not what they were. And I think what, moving from Liverpool is not, is not an option for them, I think. And, um, and, and obviously what Joe was saying there, I think the first one's the most important. I mean, I was up there for the City game, uh, you know, when they, when they, they lost it. Um, Raheem scored, Sterling scored, and they all thought they were going to win it. And then, so, so obviously what happened was a huge disappointment. Um, but then for them to, to lose it and then to come back now, they've won their first one, and I think it'd be many more. OK, well, I'll tell you what, where there's a winner, there's sadly someone losing out as well. We'll hopefully hear from Jurgen Klopp when we get a chance in a few moments' time. But let's hear from the manager who tried so hard to win the Premier League this season. He knows what it takes to do it, but on this occasion, it's not his. Here's Pep Guardiola with Des. Pep, it was an eventful game, not the results you would have wanted, of course. But what did you make of the performance? Well, in that level, the mistakes they punish you a lot. So I think we, in terms of the way we play, we play good. Not... Uh, Especially not many chances, not a lot of presence in the in the box, but Chelsea's with the, his physicality and the way he played defensively was not easy. But we play an, in general a real, real good game. But uh, in that level, the mistakes uh, they punish you. And looking at the bigger picture now, of course, the consequence of that is that you hand the title to Liverpool. Do you want to finally pay tribute to them? They got there in the end. Of course, a big congratulations for uh, Liverpool and. Uh, for this uh, great season and for the title they won. Is the fact that you have lost the title, will you use that as a motivation next season to go again? We have uh, still five weeks, six weeks for a lot of things to play. We have time to, to think about it, but of course, what this club has done the last decade, fighting for the titles, so 
We won a lot in the last uh, years and uh, of course we're going to try to to be close. The cup is so two seasons ago we won for 25 points behind in front of Liverpool. So after two seasons they have uh, more than 20 right now. So the gap is big and have to try to reduce it. Well, why is the gap quite that big? What's the difference this season? Well, uh, we are not consistent like like uh, the previous seasons. I think uh, we arrive with after four titles in one season. Okay, we have time, we have time. Liverpool, after winning the Champions League, they give you an incredible confidence. And the fact that 13 years no win the Premier League, so they was incredible focus and they play every game like it was the last game. And in the beginning we didn't play in that way. And uh, when they take the advantage, of course the pressure for the runners are are bigger, and uh, and they they win. But we cannot forget we are still second in the league, so we were better than a lot of teams. And uh, and we are going to you know to finish to qualification for the Champions League, and especially on Sunday we have an important game in Newcastle, and have to prepare against Madrid. Lorraine, you you will know how it feels to to be a winner and then to not win the title. The, the conversation there was about that firing Pep's belly to come back and win it next season. What is the emotion like on a night like tonight when you're the side that haven't won it? Yeah, you've got to dust yourself down, definitely. You, there's, there's a rebooting uh, period where you've got to look at what's gone wrong that season. I think Chelsea came along with Mourinho. All of a sudden, it changed the dynamic of the whole league. They came out of the blocks fast. 12, 15 points ahead before you knew it and you're thinking, well, how are we going to get back? Then it's a period of time to adjust and actually, actually analyse what's gone on and then go again. And that's what City, all the other chasing pack need to do. They've seen what Liverpool have done the last two years, the, the amount of points they've amassed. The consistency is unheard of and they've got to match that. And it's about recruiting the right players, but also, again, we talked about culture at Liverpool. Have got, you've got to set your own culture at your own clubs to try and match this. It's important. It's important you don't try and copy the template. Mm. You've got to see what's beyond Liverpool. Like and, and Rio said, and then Man United come back against Chelsea and they Ronaldo emerged, Tevez, Rooney, and that was probably the best team I've played against in the Premier League, that team. Then it took us three years to get back. And we, there was a lots of mistakes in recruitment in them three years. We didn't get the right players sort of up to the dressing room. And then we, we finally got it back in 2010. But in Man City were emerging, and then another threat comes along. So you can't co you can't try and emulate them. You've you've got to, as a club, try and find your way and get the right players through the door. It's going to be interesting, isn't it, next season with a, an improving Manchester United and improving Chelsea, City, Wolves. We are again just. Uh... You, your era, we, I spoke about before, were a great, a great era. They dominated for many years. Do you see any similarities between the, the, the way the, the, the club's building itself now to in your era? Yeah, obviously, uh, it's building at a far quicker rate now, off the pitch than what it was with it, uh, when we were playing. That they, they, It's gone huge commercially now, the, the football clubs. But for me, I think it, both teams are exactly... Both dressing rooms are the same as what it was uh, when we were playing. There's no arrogance in there, there's no big heads, there's nobody jack the lad, I think they're bigger or better than anybody else. And they're all very humane lads. You hear stories about them getting in for petrol and paying for everybody's petrol in the, in the station. Uh, they go buy people food and they seem to be very, very generous, humble and appreciative of human beings. And by the way, as well as being successful, it makes them good lads. <laughs> Listen, Kenny, apart from replying to many text messages over the next couple of hours, how are you gonna, how are you gonna celebrate in the uh, Dalgleish household this evening? Well, I remember Bob Paisley said once, uh, after the European Cup win in Rome, he said he never had a drink, he just wanted to get drunk and remember uh, the occasion and he get drunk in the atmosphere. Bob, I never took your advice, I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 there you go. The champagne has been opened in the Dalgleish household. Come on, take a sip for us, Kenny. And listen, with your scarf on and the champagne in hand, I know it's been a long wait. We know how much you love the city, how much you love the football club, and it's a, it's a special night for Liverpool, and you enjoy it, all right? And thank you very much. And you're getting all the lads absolutely fantastic. Thank you for all the memories, and I hope there's more to come. Enjoy your all champagne. Day. Oh, what a legend, what a hero. Kenny, thank you very much. Um, there you go, Kenny Dalgleish. Who better to speak to, first of all? And you get on your phone now. You've got a lot of messages to reply to. Uh, right, let's... Um, what a season so far. You know, we've been 
incredible, incredible um, to be part of this group of players, to be part of this, you know, journey that I started with, with, with when I joined the club is is uh, is incredible. I'm very proud to uh, to call myself a Premier League winner as well. I'm interested to know what your emotions are tonight because, you know, sometimes teams will win the title on the final day with the final kick as we saw a few seasons ago with City. But you've got such a lead and if it didn't happen tonight, we kind of all knew it was going to happen. So what were your emotions like watching the game if, if indeed you did watch it? Yeah, of course I watched it. <laughs> First of all. But, um, yeah, obviously it was a, a great first goal from Chelsea and obviously then, you know, I think the, the, the game... I don't watch too many games, but the game felt like it was taking ages. It was, it was just like never ended. And obviously, when the free kick went in from from Kevin, uh, what obviously uh, unbelievable goal again. You know, I, I I was getting more nervous. I've never been that nervous in a while. Um, but yeah, after that, you know, it was just celebration time, and we all enjoyed it. We all proud of proud of each other, and uh, yeah, just just amazing. And the feeling is. Can't really describe it, to be to be honest. Hi, Virgil. It's Rio here. Congratulations, firstly, man. Um, but you know, when you signed for Liverpool, did you did you envisage it being this quick, the success coming to you guys this quick? Obviously, Liverpool were a very good team at that time, but yourself and Alisson signing. Lads, congratulations you go, well to all of you. <laughs> Yes, lad. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> Come on, listen, you oh, can man. have a drink. You can have a drink on air, it's no problem. As you're still there, yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're still here, yeah. No, I was saying, did you, did you see it changing that quick, Virgil? Did you see the success coming as quick as it has done for you guys? Well, you know, to be absolutely honest, uh, when I joined in, in, the, in the winter, um, I hope for the best in the first six months. I hope to, to settle as quickly, quickly as I can. And to reach the, the Champions League final straight away was, 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 a, was a big boost for me personally. It was, uh, yeah, it, was, it was something that just, you know, helped me a lot. And... Obviously, the year after, we, we came very close with the Premier League and we were very lucky enough and, and, and blessed that we could win the Champions League. And, and this year, we just, you know, especially the league, we have been taking it to a different level and everyone can have their opinions and, and, and stuff. But, you know, we have been so consistent. We have been, you know, doing so well, um, you know, in different parts of our game, uh, whether it is that we have to dig deep and, and, and do it in the last couple of minutes of the game or do it comfortably as well and um yeah it's 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 a fantastic feeling and i'm very very proud that i'm that i'm a premier league winner as well virgil joe cole here congratulations mate fantastic just a quick question about the dressing room it seems like you're like brothers what's the secret how comes you can be be behind in games you could be coming from behind you could be in, in front in games and you always seem to find the way what is it in that dressing room give us a give us an idea of what it's like well, I think from the moment I've joined, I've felt that the manager especially have put in, you know, a, a mentality that everyone is, you know, we all, we all one team. Um, so it's, it's, it's part of, you know, everyone is part of it. So whether it is the people that work at Melwood, the people that work in the stadium, all the players, of course, and, and everyone else, we all, we all on the same, same boat and we all want the, want the same thing. We want the, want the same success. And, um, and everyone knows that, the least we can do in games is to is to work hard and give everything give everything that we have and and got, and whether there's enough for, for, to win the game, we'll see. But that's the least we can do, and I think we all know that we all want to do it for each other. And obviously, outside of the pitch, to have a bond like we have is is outstanding as well. Virgil Crouch here. Congratulations again, mate. Um, just one quick one. Uh, could you send me the address of that party, please, mate? <laughs> 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 I'll be round. And Hendo's coming now. Hendo, the, the big skipper is coming now. He's the, the main man. He's here. Well, let's have a word with him. Listen, Virgil, we'll let you go and have a drink, mate. You've earned one. Congratulations. Well Thank done to you. Much, Thank you very much. And we will uh, we'll swap out Virgil for Jordan. Big man here. What? Yeah, you forgot your drink. Sorry. <laughs>
<laughs> Don't forget your drink. Oh, champions. Oh, Who's having that? Oh, just your own life. My own Hello, life. Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> That's taken you by surprise. Listen, mate, congratulations. Well done. We need to know uh, which Liverpool squad member is brave enough to let everyone round their house. Sorry, I didn't quite hear that. Who's brave enough to let all the players round to their house for a night out? We're not in, we're not in the house. You're not sure. I don't, think I, can give the I don't think I can give the location just in case thousands of people turn up. No, listen, definitely do not give the location. Uh, how's the party going? How are you feeling? Well done. Just saying, well done, congratulations. How does it feel? Thanks very much. No, it's, yeah, it's an amazing feeling, you know. Um, I haven't wanted to speak about it for, for a long time. You know, you keep trying to get us to talk about it, but I've never wanted to speak about it. But now we've finally done it, you know, finally over the line. It's just an amazing feeling. I'm so just proud to be a part of it, you know, with these bunch of lads, um, the staff. This football club, you know, it's just so special to be a part of. And, um, yeah, just just lost for words at the minute, to be honest. Yeah, yeah I spoke to you the other day, uh, Jordan, just to say congratulations again, but you didn't want to chat about it, as you said here. Um, but I want to talk to you about the manager. We spoke about the players with Virgil, but I want to speak about the manager and his influence on you as a group. How's that been? Yeah, the manager's been... I said, I said, I've just done an interview there and I, and I, and I said that last year after the Champions League final that um, this wouldn't be possible without the manager, you know. Um, the day one when he came in, what he's, what he's done in inside the club, outside the club, players that were already here, the players that he's brought in um, and what he's done on this journey so far has been incredible, you know, and it's just been yeah, a, a joy to be a part of it and I hope we stay hungry, I know we will, we want more, we want to keep going and we'll hope this journey can last for a lot longer. Jordan, Joe Cole here, mate. Congratulations. Well done. Thank you. How, Thank you. When, I know you said you didn't want to talk about it, but we, was, we thought that it was done in December. When did you think, <laughs> look, when, when did you think in your heart, we've got this in a bag? Was there a particular game? You know what it is, Joel? Honestly, like it is, it is pretty cliche. Every time I come on the on the screen after a game, and I say, "Listen, we're taking each game at a time. We never get ahead of ourselves." And that was that was honestly the mentality. You know, I never ever wanted to think about the end goal. I never wanted to think about what would happen if we did win or we didn't win a certain game or lose a certain game. It was the the focus was solely on the next game you know and even to this point now i never thought of, thought of once of 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 what may or may not happen um of course when we had the the lockdown that changed a little bit because i i had a lot of time to think and we weren't training and we weren't playing so that made it more difficult um but you just got to stay focused, stay positive and just pray that you get back and you get back training when everything was safe to do so and, and play the games and finish the season off because I knew if we'd done that then we're in a great position to, to go and finish it off. So, um, yeah, I'm just delighted to be able to speak about it now and, and like I say, get over the line and, and finally win the Premier League. I oh, know it's lovely to have an evening with all the lads there. Um, have you had a chance to speak to your family yet? Because I guess, you know, for parents and things, it's about remembering all those hours of driving you to games of football, standing in the pouring rain, watching you playing youth team, and now here they are looking at their son as a, as a Premier League winner. Yeah, I managed to speak to, to me mum and dad, obviously, um, which was, yeah, emotional for them, of course. Um, yeah, and again, like you see, all the everything they've done for me since I've been a a kid, you know, and um, and what they've they've been through themselves and and helped me uh, come through is is yeah I can never see it, see it, uh, repay them for what they've done for me, you know, and to the position I'm in now. So yeah, it was nice to speak to them so so shortly after the final whistle, um, and I'm sure I'll um, I'll speak to them in a bit more depth tomorrow. Jordan Crouchy, uh, well done again, mate. Superb. I uh, just Thanks. wondered, I, for the rest of the season now, what's the what's the mentality? It must be so hard once you've won the league to to go on and finish strongly. But there are so many records you can still break. Yeah, that's it. You know, I mean, tonight is all about enjoying it and um, celebrating, of course. Um, 
But after that, um, I know what the lads are like and I know what the manager's like. Um, and we'll want to go and win every game again. You know, f from now till the end of the season, we'll want to go in each game um, and try to, to win. Um, you know, and we'll want to give everything. Um, we've got a tough game next in Man City. You can see how good they've been um, through the course of the season, even after lockdown when they've come back, how good they've been. So it's, it's a tough game. Um, but for us, we want to finish the season strongly. We want to win as many games as possible. Um, and hopefully, yeah, like you say, then that takes us into the records um, and breaking even even more records. So that there's still a lot to play for for us to, to be able to do that. Hi, Jordan, it's Rio again here. Um, you know, with the coronavirus that's been, been around uh, the last few months, um, meaning that obviously social distancing and fans not being able to be in the, in the stadiums, etc., and enjoying this moment with you, does that... Leave it, diminish it a little bit for you, or is it or is still? Listen, the achievement is what it is, and you're going to celebrate again. You can you can delay that celebration. Yeah, the the, the achievement, like you see, it, it is what it is. I mean, I play in I play in the park to be able to win a Premier League. You know, I just do anything to to be in this position. Was I'm so grateful and thankful that I'm I'm in this position. You know, so of course it's unfortunate that the fans can't be there with us at this moment in time. So I feel a bit sorry for them because they've waited so long. Um, but I know when they can come back in, we'll definitely do something and have a celebration together. And um, I'm sure they'll be celebrating now in the houses with the families as well. So yeah, it doesn't take any shine off it whatsoever for us. You know, we've had an amazing season so far and we want to finish it off even better. Um, and then keep going, you know, we don't want to stop now. Um, like last year, drove us on even harder and even better and we want to do the same after this one. Listen, Jordan, finally, obviously, I spend a lot of my time now talking to men who stand in studios rather than stand on football fields. And almost to a man, they say to me, I loved my career, but I just wish in those big moments I'd just take it a second to really savour it and really enjoy it. So whatever else happens this evening before the relentlessness continues, just make sure you all take a moment and just savour what you've achieved. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Well done, take care. Go and get back to the party. Thank you. Enjoy yourself. Go on. Thank you. See ya. Oh, that'll be fun, right? Yeah, it should be. If he remembers anything tomorrow, it's not been good enough. <laughs> right, there you go. Uh, right, plenty of movie reactions still to come. We are live for another 35, 40 minutes or so, so stay